All right, everyone. I am in Bentonville, Arkansas. I'm making my way towards the city center. It is a Saturday morning, uh, about 10:30. Showing you a bit of the neighborhood right outside downtown. It's beautiful. Uh, they've got some apartment uh, buildings here. A lot of residential in and at the edge of the city. Always the sign of a healthy downtown. Anyway, I'm uh, approaching it right now. It's about 35 degrees outside, which is not that bad, except for the wind. It's a bit windy. So it's a bit chilly for this Texan. But I'm going to get out and walk around anyway. Now, you are probably familiar with Bentonville in that it is the birthplace of Walmart. Uh, this is the city square. The heart of downtown. But anyway, yes, this is the birthplace of Walmart. It's still the world headquarters of Walmart, which is, in terms of revenue, the largest corporation in the world. Now, if you see that 510 Waltons, that's the original. That's the first Walmart right there. You think you know towns in Arkansas. They've got a reputation, some of them, but uh, Bentonville, it's nothing like that. Bentonville Parks and Recreation welcomes you to the square. Well, that is where I'm at. Out here on foot, taking a look at the sights here in the main square of downtown. No empty buildings here. No boarded up storm uh, storefronts. Uh, this is probably one of the most beautiful smaller town city centers in this entire country. I'm going to give you the numbers for this town and they are impressive. Uh, I'm going to try to stay <laughs> near some buildings and maybe get a bit of a uh, break from the wind though. Anyway, yeah, there it is. Let's start there. In 1950, Sam Walton bought this spot, closed it, reopened it as Walton's Five and Dime became Walmart. Uh, supposedly, oh, I was going to go to the Walmart Museum. It is being renovated. That is a bummer. At this site on May 9, 1950, Sam Walton opened his original Walton's Five and Dime. Forerunner of Walmart. Well, that really sucks because uh, I wanted to see his 1979 Ford pickup truck. I remember as a kid reading how even though he was one of the world's richest men, he still drove the old pickup truck around town here. Ah, well. Anyway. Uh, now as a kid growing up in Tulsa, which is only about an hour and a half away, I remember coming here and it was just a little town. And this is late 70s. I looked up the population figures for that era, that time. 1970, the population here was 5,500. And in 1980, it was 8,700. So yes, it was a small town, especially compared to Tulsa. Uh, but it is a fast growing town and continues to do so. In 2000, the population was 19,100. 2010, it had grown to 35,000, a little over. Uh, 2022, 12 years later, there are 57,900 people here. So this city has grown fast and continues to do so. The metro population is 560,700. Over half a million. You're like, what? Well, this is part of a four-city metro, 
Bentonville, Fayetteville. Uh, what is it? Rogers. Uh, is it Springdale? Yeah. These four towns uh, are all together, basically one big city that make up this metro area. The second largest in Arkansas, the fastest growing. I'm next to Walton's original store. Uh, this building here, which is on the National Register, by the way, is owned by Walmart. My understanding it is, or is that it's a soda fountain now, but it is, <laughs> looks like it's close to. I guess I came at the wrong time, didn't I? Anyway, I'm going to head this way, because you can see some beautiful architecture in this direction. Now I'm going to tell you the numbers for the town, and they're impressive. <laughs> you guys who watch my channel, you hear some of the numbers, and often they're not good, but not here. Uh, let's start with the poverty rate, 9.1. Uh, that is below the U.S. average of 11.6. Median household income is 109,800 a year, almost 110,000 dollars a year. Median household income, U.S. average is 78,000, a little over. Uh, median home value is 448,000 dollars, which is above the U.S. national average. U.S. national average is 428,000. Crime is low, about 20% lower than the national average. And uh, the average age of the, or the median age of the people living here is 31.7. That is the Hotel Massey, built in 1910, on the National Register, as you can well guess. All in all, there are, I think I read over 30 buildings here in the area on the National Register. Uh, the city has taken very good care of them. Uh, clearly they have the money for it though, when you got a company as big as Walmart. This is an arts town. There are world-class museums here. My wife and I will probably go to one. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Yeah, Crystal Bridges which was established by Alice Walton, Sam Walton's daughter, uh, with something like 30 miles of mountain bike trails. Bentonville proclaims itself to be the mountain bike capital of the world. They're also proud of the many murals that are here in downtown. There's another one, or one right here beautiful. I'm over here on the other side of the square trying to stay in the sun, <laughs> stay a little bit warm. Uh, I was reading that somewhere between 11 and 1200 companies maintain offices here in Bentonville for the sole purpose of facilitating relations with Walmart. I'm sure that adds to the uh, economic prosperity of the town. Interestingly, there is no international airport here. Uh, Little Rock doesn't have one either. Little Rock's, what, almost 800,000 people? No international airport. Kind of surprising. The town was named after a Missouri senator. His name was Thomas Hart Benton. Uh, like I said, there are several museums here. I'm heading to one right now. I'm not going to tour it, but they have a car out front I want to show you. Yeah, this is the car here. It is covered in coins. Nickels. Nickels and pennies. Let me step back so I can get a better look at it. <laughs> That's pretty cool, huh? I wonder how much weight these coins add uh, to, the, to the car. Look at the tires. They look like they could use a little air. Anyway, yep, give you a close look. Pennies and nickels. How about that? Now, a lot of people, myself included, have a love-hate relationship with Walmart. On one hand, I hate this, you know, what it's done to small towns as a guy who loves small town America. 
how it's decimated those city centers in many of them you do see towns that have adjusted but a lot of towns in America this, the downtowns have been killed the mom and pop businesses by Walmart but on the other hand the argument is that especially in many of these towns it provides food and growth you know every kind of thing you possibly need to get by in life they have it there cheap and it's uh, an employer and I will myself complain and say something about Walmart then the next day I'll go into Walmart and go shopping which I guess makes me a bit of a hypocrite fun fact though about our travels that you know I've never said before the wife and I have been into a Walmart in all the lower 48 states how about that okay I wanted to show you this place it's called the momentary it was formerly a craft foods factory that the city has converted into festival and well any kind of gathering that you may want that's what it is now uh, it's beautiful uh, very close to downtown less than half a mile it's just downtown's right this way a lot of apartment construction over here really well developed looks like a place for a concert a show live shows uh, it's uh, it's impressive absolutely beautiful well well I did not expect to see this deep in the heart of Walmart country how about that that's pretty ballsy Dollar General <laughs> Take a quick look. This is it. This is the world headquarters of Walmart. Kind of just a nondescript building, isn't it? I guess it goes with the theme of the company. Nothing fancy, just low prices. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there it is. Just a quick look. Walmart's World Headquarters. Should I swing around and take another look? Why not? Yeah, there it is. Hmm. No one here today, it's Saturday. I'm about two blocks out of downtown, checking out a neighborhood. What does it look like close to downtown? Bentonville? Uh, you're seeing it. Beautiful homes. Ah, huh. I've driven all over town, or quite a bit of the town. I haven't seen anything run down yet. I'm sure it's here. Every town has it, but uh, wow. Really beautiful homes here. What do you think, Walmart money? <laughs> doesn't hurt to have a, or it doesn't hurt a town to have a bunch of billionaires living in it. And like I said, all these other companies with their offices here, I'm sure they, they pay their people pretty well. Look at this beautiful house. It's got the little separate garage there. That's an old house there, but it is a beauty. Look at that love it this one too got garages back there in the back amazing 
I've seen some really ultra modern looking houses here too. You know, something that could have been designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Here's one right here. He's got a house here, by the way. We should be able to see it uh, when I get the wifey. Anyway. Yeah, there's another one there. Look at that architecture. That is something. Another one here. This house is for sale, it looks like. But again, seeing this style quite a bit here. Looks Frank Lloyd Wright influenced. Am I wrong? Huh. Yet another street of just amazing looking homes. Look at this one. All different styles too. Now look here. Big three story. Hey, I thought Arkansas was a poor state. Look at all this. Goodness gracious. What we got here? A little garage tucked in there. Beautiful. Hmm. All right, everyone. So that's the end of this part of the video. I'm gonna go grab the wifey. We're gonna check out the Crystal Bridges Museum and uh, have an early dinner at a local restaurant so that's coming up next well believe it or not we are actually in the city in the middle of the city of Bentonville you wouldn't guess that really beautiful here but we are approaching the Crystal Bridges Museum uh, we're going to take a look at that all right, we are at the Crystal Bridges Museum. Uh, there's wifey in a hurry to get inside because it's chilly. Be interested to see this place. Well, we are in uh, one of the galleries here. Looks pretty amazing. Let's see what we got here. This one's called Florida Mexicana. Painted in 1936 by Alfredo Martinez. Shows an indigenous Mexican woman offering a large bowl of flowers. This one is called George Washington Looked Into Another World. Painted 1987. Howard Finster basically depicts George Washington looking into another world. <laughs> like he entered a dimension, alternate dimension. That's pretty cool. I like that. I want that on my wall in my man cave. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure you can afford to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> this is called Johnny by Susie J. Lee, 2013. This is something called a high-definition video it blinks portrait. blinks at you. Yeah, it's a video it portrait. It scared me. <laughs> That's so bizarre. Some guy in North Dakota says it took 30, yeah, 30 minute sequences that she put together. I never, I've never even heard of a video portrait. Have you? No, that's why it freaked me out when it blinked at me at first. Yeah, that's something different. Huh. Believe it or not, this was painted here in the U.S. by Benjamin West. What year was that, this painted? 1808. 1808, Cupid and Psyche. Wow. That's pretty spectacular. Picks the love affair between Cupid and Psyche. Oh, yeah. He's got a naked already. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Rooster from 1897. Who's the artist? Gustav Denzel. Gustav Denzel, yeah. This is the kind of thing I would want. Hmm? This is the kind of thing I would want. This is awesome. Guess where he lived at, too. Huh? What'd you say? Guess where he lived at as well. Philadelphia. Oh, this is from Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. Yep, sure enough. Yep. So this is by William Wetmore Story. It's called Sappho. That's the name of the woman. She lived on the island of Lesbos, mm -hmm. which is where the word lesbian came from. And she actually preferred women. 
Yeah, it was modeled in 1862. What do you think of that? Hmm? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. Yeah, this is striking. It's called Hunger by Walter Ufer. When was this painted? I'm 19. Sorry. 1919. 1919. That is, wow. Well, they have an actual copy of the Constitution. How about that? Hmm, what? It's, a, it's an, an actual copy. How Official many first edition of the con uh, Constitution. How many copies did they make? I'm not sure, but this is first edition, it says. 1787. How about that? Now, this is a portrait of George Washington by Gilbert Stewart, 1797. Hmm. They have an actual first edition of the Bill of Rights, 1789, one of, oh, one of 100 printed. This is one of them. This is one of the 26 copies of Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. Basically ending slavery. That's his actual signature, signed by him. This is called Second in the Screen Door Sequence from To Kill a Mockingbird. It's like a 3D artwork, isn't it? An actual screen door with the painting behind, with the light fixture. Yeah, this I like a lot. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. So this is from 1965. Mm -hmm. Nancy Grossman. It's called Car Horn. I wonder what made her think of this. Maybe she had been in a car accident. <laughs> yeah, that's what it does. It looks like a mangled car. Huh? Yeah, I really like this. Is that Pinocchio? Is that who it is? Huh? Yeah, I guess you're right. It is Pinocchio. Huh. I'm a real boy. Yeah, <laughs> I just watched that movie. What, are you talking about Shrek? <laughs> no, Pinocchio. You, oh, it's Guillermo a movie Guillermo del now. Toro just did one. I just okay. watched it. All right, we just got ourselves some culture. Enough of that, though. Now it's time for an early dinner. We fed our minds, now we need to feed our bodies. That's right. So <laughs> we're going to head into downtown and go to a uh, restaurant that's unique to here. Bentonville Taco and Tamale Company. So that's where we're going to go. My wifey's getting inside because she's cold as usual. It's cold out here. We were told the food here is good. This is where we're going. It's got a nice big bar. Be cool. Well, we have our drinks. I'm having a local stout. Bike Rack Brewing Company. Night Ride. Haven't tried it yet. And you're having... Knob Creek. Knob Creek and water. Uh -huh. Awesome. We're uh, trying to decide what food we're going to have. Well, our food is here. I'm having enchiladas. One cheese, one beef. And yes, even though we're at a Mexican restaurant, I didn't get Mexican. Well, you kind of got Mexican, but anyway, I got uh, rice and uh, their version of beans, and you got what is this? A citrus salmon, right? It's a salmon salad. Yeah, look at all that. That's a lot of salmon. Yep, I'll probably be taking one of these uh, salmon fillets up. Look how pretty the salad is, though. Look how they do the onions. Yeah, it is pretty. <laughs> pretty salad. All right, update on the food. This, this might be the best enchilada I've ever had. Oh, please. How many enchiladas have you actually had? A lot. I eat enchiladas everywhere. <laughs> the beans and rice are fantastic. How's your salmon? My salmon salad is amazing. Look how look how beautifully they cut my, my veggies. It's so yeah. pretty, but it tastes good as well. And the salmon is nice and juicy. Yummy. How's that dressing? It's a citrus dressing, right? It's like a fruity dressing? It's like a tomato something. Oh, really? Tomato citrus something. I'm sorry. I don't remember exactly. It's pretty good, though. Excellent. Yeah, really good food here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. Here in cold. Bentonville, Arkansas, isn't that right? Quite cold. <laughs> so, uh, after this, uh, I've got a rural Oklahoma town video. 
should be interesting interesting towns and after that we're not sure so uh someplace warm probably someplace warm so anyway be looking for that